Hi Cubies, here's your Alexandra and welcome to another video. As you can clearly see, uh, this is not my usual painting setup because, well, we are not painting today, we are cooking. So, um, I thought uh, for the Christmas time uh, I will show you um, one of um, Germany's favorite Christmas dishes, goulash. So, what do we need for a good goulash? Well, obviously, we need meat. In this case here we have Putin goulash. This is just uh, um, well some meat slices. As you can see here we have uh, two packages of uh, 500 uh, grams, so one kilo in total. We have uh, two big onions, uh, we have some uh, garlics and oil, um, then we have uh, for uh, the frying we have uh, cleared butter or butterschmalz in German. We have meat for uh, deglazing. We have uh, some tomato paste for the glazing part that we will uh, deglaze. And uh, I have uh, previously uh, made, uh, well, about one liter of uh, stock, vegetable stock. Uh, this is one, uh, this is half a liter of this. Uh, the rest is in my fridge. And uh, to create this, I have uh, just used uh, one package of uh, soup greens, just like that. There's a leek in there, some uh, carrots and uh, pastinaken and uh, something like that. Plus one of uh, those onions uh, chopped up uh, with the uh, skin attached, uh, put it into a pot, water on it uh, and let it boil for uh, about two hours. And uh, then you remove all the, uh, well, hard ingredients and uh, you will be left with uh, a nice vegetable stock. But you could uh, also buy a packaged one if you so desire. So uh, the first thing uh, we are going to do is uh, chop off the onions into uh, dices and uh, add a little bit of garlic uh, to this. <coughs> um, also about two or three of uh, those things. And uh, well, I'll be back in a second. Okay, here we go. We're just chopping onions. Now with overhead camera view. My fancy technique. My normal camera holder that I use for <coughs> filming the miniature painting. It's also useful for filming cooking videos. Who had thought of that? <laughs> Really nice onion dicing here. It doesn't need to be super exact science. <clears throat> See, uh, this stem here, I uh, leave that out. That's, that's not good. So, that was onion number one, and here goes onion number two. But surely I don't have enough room on my cutting board. But hey, that's okay. We're almost done. Onion slicing done. Be right back for the meat. 
So, um, for this goulash uh, we need a big pot to cook in. This is a 5 liter pot and uh, well, we will uh, add now some cleared butter to it. Yeah, that should be enough. And we let that quickly melt in there. Be right back. So, there we can uh, see the last remnants of the cleared butter dissipate on the floor, on the bottom, and now it's time for our meat. So, what kind of meat you're using is absolutely irrelevant. You can do this uh, with chicken, with uh, pork, with beef, even with kangaroo if you want, if you like. <laughs> so, we put in our uh, first set of meat and we start searing it on a hot temperature. And don't pry it uh, off the uh, bottom, just wait a little bit. It uh, needs to be stuck on there to generate the, um, well, meat flavor we desire. So, the sound in the background is obviously my fan that is erasing all the steams that uh, come out here. I hope my camera lens will not fog uh, up too much. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Time to stir it a little bit. We want some uh, nice browning of the meat. I know this is uh, maybe a little bit boring to watch, but trust me, it is worth it. So, and um, don't worry if you uh, have here a brown spot in the bottom of your pan. <coughs> that is exactly what we want. We want the nice roast flavors that will be generated by uh, roasting this meat and we will deglaze it in time but first roasting the meat you may have noticed that I've uh, only uh, put in one packet so far well we will roast uh, the second part in a second There we go. Here you see this uh, nice brown part here at the bottom. That's exactly what you want. Those are the flavors that will bring us joy in the end. So, I think for our first batch, that uh, is plenty enough. So, let's uh, quickly remove the first batch of meat.
now for fetch number two. So overall, what kind of meat you're uh, using will in the end determine the overall taste of the dish, obviously. Every meat uh, has different flavors to it. But I find uh, chicken flavor or beef or <coughs> pork are all very nice. Uh, you can even uh, combine them. So uh, if you'd like uh, to have one batch of uh, pork meat and uh, the second batch of uh, chicken meat, go for it. Or beef and pork or ostrich and pork. Um, you have seen this uh, part already, um, I'll be back in a second when we will uh, add some onions to it. So, our second batch of meat uh, is looking good so far, you can see, and uh, now it's time to add some of the onions, let's say half of it. And now we will uh, add also some garlic oil. Uh, as you can see here, I've uh, just uh, placed some garlic in some oil. And very cheap and gentle way to create your own garlic oil. <laughs> we will add that now because, um, well, this has a, a lower burning temperature than um, the uh, clear butter we have uh, previously used. So uh, we don't want to burn the garlic flavor, but uh, now is a good time. Also now is a good time to uh, cut up some little garlic of your own. So maybe two pieces. don't need to be uh, very fancy and small. Get some bigger chunks. There we go. They will be well cooked away in time. No need to destroy the garlic by pressing it. Just take some chunks. Nice, chunky garlic bits. So, as you can hear, uh, the uh, frying has uh, subsided to a simmer. That's because the onions will obviously uh, release water into uh, our pan. And as you can see, our first deglazing with just the onions is now uh, subsiding. All the brownish on the bottom is going away. Nicely going away. So, that my friends is the time when we introduce some tomato paste to the mix. Uh, that should be enough. The tomato paste uh, will give this overall a nice uh, Flavor and it's good for uh, the glazing part of the roast. It will also give uh, the goulash overall a nice brownish in the end. So, stir that well with the onions and the meat. There we go. And now we uh, let some roast aromas be created. You can see, or hear, rather, the uh, frying in the bottom of the pan. Always remember, 
Put stuff back into the fridge, put away your pants, clean your kitchen, put utensils, and so on. Now, ah, there you see, we got some uh, nice brownish now uh, again on the bottom. There. And now start our, our first deglazing with our meat. Some cooks, or most cooks, prefer red wine or white wine. I prefer meat, just because it has a nice acidity and sweetness to it that uh, wines do not uh, possess. So, just a little bit to get this all started. And scratch at the bottom with your wooden spatula to get the nice flavors from the bottom. There we go. We let that uh, now cook in to, well, release the meat into the wild. You're free! Fly! Well, <coughs> now we can add the first batch of meat again. Also with all the meat juice that was on my cutting board. Go back in there. Stir it nicely. And we let that simmer for a bit until all the alcohol is evaporated. And, uh, well, we can glaze again and then deglaze again. So you see here, this is about the amount that needs to be cooked away, but it's relatively easy and uh, fast achieved. I'll be back when this is done. So, there we are back, and as you can see here, it's almost uh, gone, all the water. Yeah, it's a good pot roast so far. So, now would be a good time to uh, uh, salt this. So, a good amount for this is uh, uh, about two teaspoons for salt. Enough. What kind of salt I'm using? Well, I'm used. Uh, I'm using ionized. Uh, Idenized, or how it is called, uh, salt. Because it's good for you. Iodine, that's what's the name. Yeah. Or in German, Jodesalz, with fluorine. Now it's the time for the rest of the onions. And all of it, every little piece and chunk, go in there. Yeah. And the onions will uh, provide us with a little bit more juice and water. But on the other hand, it uh, took up all the juice we had previously, you see? <coughs> so, now we can uh, really start the glazing and deglazing stage of uh, the goulash. Always let it uh, simmer for 
maybe two to five minutes. Then check the bottom if uh, we have nice brownage. And then we will add some of our vegetable stock that we made previously or that we have bought. Uh, if you can't find vegetable stock uh, or chicken stock um, in your supermarket, don't uh, be afraid. You can also use a can of uh, chicken noodle soup. Who would have thought of that? <laughs> Basically, chicken noodle soup is uh, nothing else than stock. Just with the ingredients still intact and some noodles. <laughs> so, uh, you can just uh, filter the uh, noodles and the uh, onion parts uh, and stuff out of it. And, et voila, you have stock. Or you could just leave it in there, if you so desire. You can put noodles in your goulash, if you like. <laughs> Who am I to judge? Always check the bottom. We don't want to burn stuff, we just want some nice brownage. To get the roast flavors. So, I'll be back for the next step. Yeah, and there we are back. And as you can see, we have uh, some nice brownish here at the bottom. And we introduce our stock to the glaze. And the brownish is gone into the pot roast. Just scrape a little bit at the bottom. And then let it sit again for two to five minutes. And you repeat this process until all the stock is gone. Be right back. So, as you can see, I have uh, introduced uh, the rest of the stock now to our goulash. And uh, this isn't enough liquid, so we'll just add some water to it to fill it nicely so that uh, all the meat is covered and then we can taste our product until now yeah yeah that's good. So, and this here, my friends, needs to be uh, stirred by a low flame. So uh, my um, my stove uh, goes to uh, number six. So I will reduce it to a one. Close the lid only a little bit so that. Uh, vapor can escape and uh, this will simmer now for at least two hours so be right back um, also during the two hours every 15 minutes or so go in and stir it a little bit have fun be right back okay tubies it's now half an hour in and uh, we are adding some roasted onions now about third of a cup. There we go. Stir it in. I know I haven't uh, mentioned it at the beginning, but there we go. It will give the uh, overall goulash a nice roasted flavor. And uh, now we will raise the heat from one to two and let it simmer away okay tubies there we can see our nice goulash has uh, finally cooked well and uh, you can start to see that it is finished if you can see in your uh, broth single pieces of meat like this here for example 
this means that uh, the meat itself is now at the stage that it is buttery soft. So um, <coughs> we will now uh, thicken this uh, broth here with a little bit uh, of uh, sauce binder here for uh, dark sauces. Just add a little bit of that. Stir it in and then you can uh, let the goulash sit for a while. Well, um, in order to uh, serve this then to your customers or uh, your family, uh, just add uh, some uh, nice uh, salty potatoes <coughs> plus some uh, red cabbage and uh, you have the perfect Christmas dinner. I hope you like this uh, little uh, cooking show of mine here uh, with uh, making a nice goulash for you and uh, well, we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra.